we see a man chopping in the woods. Timber, he calls out as a large tree slams to the ground. The foreman of the Great Northern Sawmill is currently out on his uh, usual route. He's, he's cutting down some trees. He's getting ready to kind of wrap up for the day. Sort of wipes his brow from, from sweat. When he hears something, far off in the woods, a churning, clanking, as a horrible beast is silhouetted in the distance. He lets out a scream, ah! as we fade to black. As we cut to uh, both Paul Bunyan and Johnny Appleseed, we are in Johnny Appleseed's uh, recent orchard, which has been laid low to the ground. Uh, all of the trees have been cut down. Uh, at first, I imagine Johnny Appleseed accused Paul Bunyan, who was very easily able to prove that he did not do this. Um, but you two find yourself there, standing in this chopped down orchard. Well, look, Johnny, I, I, I know what it I looks like. I, I know what it looks heart. like. Like, I, I have an axe in my hand, and yes, these trees have been chopped down. Uh, have they been chopped down? I look at the, I, I, I look at it. I look at the stumps. Look, you would like to investigate. Cosmic yeah, Apple's going to get you. Look, I, I think we do make a good team. Like I, you plant you them, mean, I chop them, you know, well, but. You're not supposed to chop them. The Cosmic Apple does not appreciate the chopping down of their apple trees. It's a dangerous thing, that tells you. Look, I, I, I didn't do it. Babe can attest to that. Babe, <sighs> did I cut these trees down or not? They, they were like them. They were like this when we got here, right? Moo. <sighs> See? I do not speak whatever that is. I only speak in apples, and I'm out of apples. Roll 2d6 for me, uh, 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 Paul, Paul Bunyan. All right. <laughs> Babe, when you ask Babe that, Babe nods. Yes, like he, you didn't do it. Yeah, see, well, Babe can pantomime common. Well, That's great. As it you... just tells me you trained the beast to nod his head at questions. Isn't that right, cow? <laughs> Babe shakes it's his just... head no. Yeah, it shakes his head no. <laughs> see, he's nodding his head. Great Apple does not appreciate this. Mm -mm. Look, Johnny, I think what we have to do to prove my innocence is find out who did chop these trees down. And they kill. As you sort of get down onto the ground uh, and look at these uh, these stumps, uh, yeah. Paul Bunyan, you you kind of examine them. Yeah, these were these were pretty big trees that were felled. Um. Some of them don't look extremely cleanly uh, cut, but more importantly, they weren't chopped. Mm. These trees uh, have a very clean line in them, uh, as well as a bunch of dust, like, you know, sawdust around. Um, but, you know, the closest sawmill is at least a couple miles from here. Hmm. It be in the 1800s and all. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder if I should tell Johnny this because he didn't. He didn't seem. Paul Bunyan thinks to himself. He goes, "Babe, what do you think? Should I bring this up to Johnny Appleseed? He seems a little beside himself." Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We should tell him. Hey, hey uh, Johnny, I look at know, this. I'm trying apple, to. Huh? I'm trying to exonerate myself here. Okay. Better. <clears throat> Look, you know, you know trees almost as well as I do. Apple trees. Uh, apple trees almost as well as I do, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait. You can mm -hmm. tell when a tree's been sawed down versus a tree that's been chopped down, right? Generally, 
I don't want my apple trees going down at all. Well, I I totally agree. What's the point you're trying here. to make here, murderer? Look here. Look here. Yeah. My yeah. axe doesn't make sawdust. And that there's sawdust on the ground. These uh, trees have been sawed the, down. The blood of the trees on the ground. Oh. So what you trying to say? I'm saying there's mischief around here. As we cut away, uh, sort of zooming away from this scene, uh, we sort of lower ourselves down into a different scene. This one is of Dr. Doolittle. He's muted. No, I'm, I'm good. Dr. Doolittle, you find yourself in the Great North, examining right in front of you, probably 100, maybe not 100, 20, no, yeah, 20 feet away from you, is a beautiful albino moose. You've been tracking it for some time. Some hunters have been uh, sort of accosting it, uh, and neither you nor them have found them, but until now, um, you are in a precarious situation as you are behind a very small piece of shrubbery as this large moose is sort of rutting uh, its horns against a tree, uh, not but 20 feet away from you. All right. Well, um, I think probably what I'm going to do is uh, using my universal translator feet, uh, I'm going to call out, Ahoy, moose! Huh? It turns to you, this huge <laughs> moose. Uh, I'm going to sort of stand, <laughs> I'm going to sort of stand from behind the shrubbery and, and wave cheekily. Oh, hello. Hello, Moose. Uh, my name is Doolittle. Human. Doctor. Uh, kind of, kind of. Uh, but, uh, I'm a friend, as you can tell, because I'm speaking Moose. Human talk. Indeed I do, sir. Hmm. He ruts against the thing. Uh, well, I don't want to interrupt your your important work that you're doing there, uh, but I, I'm afraid I come bearing ill tidings. Ill? Uh, you yes. ill? You bring ill to me? No, 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 no. Uh, and he, he uh, sort of huffs and starts stomping as if he is going to charge you. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, bad news. Bad news? Yeah, bad. but Yo! not me. And it, and it begins <laughs> charging towards you, easily cutting its way through the snow. Uh, okay. um, as it is, we... As it is charging towards you, we cut to above you in a tree. Your current assistant and sort of muscle, Tarzan, the king of the jungle. Me. I, I do now. look up and shout, Char Tarzan. <laughs> As this moose is barreling towards this man. I have. Uh, are there any vines? Uh, there are. Uh, there are branches and things. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll swing off some branches. With uh, with the classic yell, <laughs> and uh, attempt to mount the back of the moose. All right, I need you to make an acrobatics check, but you're gonna get advantage to this because you are king of the jungle. All right, twenty-two. All right, as you leap into the air, you land right on the moose. The moose goes, "Duh! Attack! Big bird!" as it starts just slamming around, uh, missing you, Doolittle, and just smashing into trees, um, sort of running off into the woods, unfortunately, uh, away from you with Tarzan, with Tarzan? Uh, on tow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to send uh, Polynesia, my parrot, uh, after them to try and keep an eye on them as I, as I I'll track the moose through the snow, but I'm not as fast as a moose, so I'm gonna send send my parrot on ahead. All right, as your parrot goes 
flying ahead, this moose just barreling through the woods. We cut away yet again. This time to a cave. Nearby here in the great north. Uh, we see what looks like a, an old prospector holding a lantern with a big mining pick in his hand as he is shakily making his way into the cave, looking around. He sees chunks of meat and bone as he goes, Oh, dang it. I, I, I think I've done it myself. See bit, see spider <laughs> crawled up the water spout. He whips Down he whips the lantern around the rain <laughs> and washed the spider out. Up uh. Came the sun and dried up all the rain. But the spider uh. had just drowned. He'll uh. not see light again. And he drops his lantern. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Do you attack him? Oh, yes. Okay, you leap uh, upon him. He He's a very scrawny man. So, like, you you easily snatch him. Oh, don't eat me, Bigfoot! Don't eat me! Please! Bigfoot! <laughs> now, sir... Just Bigfoot listen. does not exist. My name is Grendel, and I oh. like it very much. I'm sorry, my Mr. mother Mr. gave it to me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mister. I mean, Grendel. Uh, I, I was just—I yes. promise <laughs> I wasn't trying to trying to kill you. I was just trying to steal your gold. And I'm sorry about calling you. Your, your feet are quite normal size. This prospector is basically bound up in a yeah. bow by a, a nine foot tall skinny hairy ape dog like creature mm -hmm. with arms and almost as long as its entire sensible height. Uh and the face goes close to the prospector's ear. <laughs> you know, oh, all that glitters isn't gold. Oh, I, I don't you know want what to... glitters by the moon. What? You don't, don't want, want to what? I don't want to say. You don't want to what? You don't want to die. No. no. <laughs> Please. Ah! As as you open your mouth, slamming his head, easily killing this this old prospector, uh, who you do see he had a knife. He was gonna stab you. Mm. And out of his pouch falls a, a wanted poster for Bigfoot. $40 Oof. reward. That thing. I wonder if it tastes good. You know, I've been sleeping for many years. And I'm so hungry. And fades to black fades to black but then mysteriously it fades back as in what? the pile of bones and debris nearby what? in his cave you see a painting sticking out of a pile of bones <laughs> and it Dorian Gray has regenerated underneath the pile of bones having been eaten by Grendel not but a day earlier Oh. Oh, I do declare. What's, what, what has been going on? 
Oh, I was just walking down the street and, well, that's all I remember. Wait, who are you? Because <laughs> Grendel is half eating a prospect. Grendel, yes, Grendel seems abs absorbed by his meal uh, oh. slightly. He doesn't hear you initially. Oh, quite horrid. And Dorian's just going to run the fuck out of there. <laughs> Dorian. Start looking for his painting. Uh, Wait! Oh. Care for some dinner? Oh. We're, you mean we're going to go have a cup of tea or, you know, some crumpets? You must be hungry. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm quite... quite Quite famished after um, all that ordeal. Oh well, please sit down. I I'm afraid I do not have any vegetables. They do not suit my palate. Is there a place to sit, or is he just like, am I just in a fucking cave? <laughs> You're like at the entrance of a cave. This skull, sit here. Uh, you know, I, I was gonna pick up a skull and sit it down. Well, and well. he's gonna pull a rib <laughs> off of the prospector and start nibbling it like you would at a barbecue. So, what brings you to my part of the world? Oh well, I was. I was having a painting done by my friend, and, um, well, I just seem to have stumbled into this cave. Unwillingly, of course. Paint. Painting. Yes. Fascinating. Yes. Fascinating. Yes, it's a large Dude. painting of my, myself. Please help, help yourself, by the way. That's as oh, Grendel remembers that. eating this man when he had a large painting tape, like, roped to the back of him. Oh, where'd the painting go? go ahead, it's just go laying in the pile of bones you were oh, in. I'm gonna grab it then. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I couldn't, I couldn't impose on eating such a fine meal and taking some from you. No, 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 no. How about instead we go mm. for a afternoon spot of tea? Uh, it'll be... You know, at a place with lights. <laughs> and chairs. <clears throat> well, to be entirely honest, this is not spiced very well. And ah, <laughs> Grendel's going to take the throw, throw in the, the, the rib and throw it into the corner. Perhaps I should get some sunshine after all. Yes. You know, I, I've been asleep. I've been very sleepy. Recovering from an ordeal. Oh. And he's going to turn and you'll see that the, the creature the creature's arm ends uh, right below its right shoulder. Like he's missing most of his arm? So, yeah. He's missing the majority of the right arm. Ah, okay. And he uses his left to... He uses his left to kind of move across the space where it would be. And you see that the hand is just gigantic in proportion to the spindly limbs. And that uh, there are, are inch-long talons uh, poking out of the fingertips. Ah. But yes, perhaps I could use some waking up. Yeah, oh yes, yes. I was going to visit my good... My, uh, my friend recommended I visit Dracula. He says... Uh, <laughs> He has a youthful appearance, just like me. So, figured I'd come to this town. By the way, where am I? <laughs> yes. 
Yes, where are we? As as I both... have it the foggiest idea. As the two of them walk out of the cave, heading out into the wilderness, there is a noise. Birds and things scatter and fly everywhere. Grendel, you're kind of taken aback by it. You know, you've been in a cave and just woke up, eaten a bit. As you hear the sound of the king of the jungle yelling, as a giant moose crashes into your arm uh, that is missing, and you are now pinned against this moose as it is barreling forward through the woods. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, <laughs> Dorian Gray, the rope of your painting also catches the horns as it goes running forward, taking both of you. Dr. Doolittle, you're pretty sure you just saw the moose run into Bigfoot and a man with a painting. I saw that. I was I was close enough. Yes, you're you're like running behind the moose. You're following its trail of destruction. I mean, I imagine that I would be put off by this, but I will try to catch up. And I'll continue running towards the moose. All right. It's like ah, I'm being attacked by all sides. Ah! Um, I, I guess I'll yell at Bigfoot. Um, I'll speak Bigfoot. And I'll be like, <laughs> Bigfoot, wrangle that moose. We need to calm him down. Uh, as you hear an ape man yelling on top of the moose, Grendel, you hear what looks like, a, actually you see like a scrawny man in the background who is also making ape-like noises. It doesn't seem like any of these people speak English based on what you've sort of uh, found. How horribly uncivilized. Ooh. And uh, Grant will bite the moose. Oh, wait, no, he, where's he stuck? Where's he pinned? You're like, um, basically imagine scooped up in the horns of it. And there's like bushes and branches smacking in the back of you. You will try to bite the moose across its eye. <laughs> uh, just make it attack. All right. Uh, I'll just be, uh, let's see. We'll just roll a. Okay. okay. A slam. All right. Uh, roll that damage real quick. A seven. All right. As you bite into it, the moose lets out. Ah! Oh, monster! Ah! Dog! Dog! As it smacks into the uh, the tree next to it, sort of barreling over its side um, and slamming through the wood line. Uh, we cut real quick to... Uh, to Paul Bunyan mm. and Johnny Appleseed. Um, an ape man had walked up to you two and introduced themselves as John Watson, currently come to America to search for a missing noble by the name of Dorian Gray. Paul Bunyan folds his arms and he's like, oh, I don't know no Dorian Gray. If there ain't no apple, I don't care. Yes. Oh, is uh, Rachel, are you there? She might not be here. I thought I saw her hop on. And seen. And seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's here. <laughs> she's here. Is her mic? Your mic's not working. That's what it is. Did I ever tell you about the Great Apple? The Great Apple? No, you yeah. didn't. Yeah. The Great Apple is the fighting entity of this universe. He binds everything together like the universe is one big apple tree. Or just one apple on that tree. 
Great. You want a you want a pamphlet? I you to be capable of yeah. Johnny. What? Well, it's a, what metaphysical? Meta what? Yeah. See? Rachel, are you? Is your mic working? Yes, I'm here. Oh, Dustin okay. was talking. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> what? I imagine Watson is like, uh, uh, excuse me. Back to the topic. Um, you are looking for a noble by the name of Dorian Gray. Uh, he was last seen after commissioning a painting, uh, heading off to the Americas uh, after being kidnapped. Well, gentlemen, I would like to thank you for your time and for the information that... Uh, that would be delightful. Thank you. Here, have an apple seed. Oh, thank you. As they're, they're really tasty. As as he's gonna take it and smell it and then eat it. Oh no. Uh, Watson. Something else you figured uh, found out whilst uh, when you came to America, looking for clues on where Dorian had been. Um. Apparently, he had been picked up by a bunch of poachers and brought up here to the Great North, um, at which point he has sort of lost track of them. Uh, he hired them, apparently, to go with him, um, but their location is currently unknown. Um, something that you did find out, though, that was a lot of sawmills around the Great North have been destroyed recently, uh, attacked by at what first was thought to be uh, wildlife, but it seems a lot more in, uh, a lot more on purpose, basically. A curious mystery. Yes, what? that's a, cu it's a curious mystery indeed as to the happening stance. Well, we need That's as it. many sawmills open as possible or else I'll be out of a job. I want them all closed. I want my apples to stay up, you apple murdering tree. Now read the damn pamphlet. I've told you again, we don't cut apple trees down. We cut good, solid oaks. Are you saying apple trees aren't solid? Because uh, the universe that binds us on the tree is an <laughs> apple tree, and it's solid. Well, well good, good sir. Um, if it's a, if it's an apple tree, then. It's good, and its wood is still rather hard, but yes, um, it's a fruit-bearing tree, so to cut down such a tree would mean that you are taking food away from the people. Uh, so that. Yes, and and we've already said that it's not my fault these trees are cut down. Monkey Man, did, did you see someone cut a tree down? The, a monkey. Actually, did you cut these trees down? Oh no, I I did not cut any trees down. It's uh, my my tree cutting days have long since been behind me since Wait, my, you cut my trees. No, no, no. I mean, when I was a mere boy, my father told me to do so, but that was long before my service time. Surrounded by tree Johnny murders. Appleseed, I don't believe him. Don't believe what? That he is a man or he's a monkey or he he's still chopping down trees. Well I, well, I don't know what to think about that, but I, I still believe he's chopping down trees and he should be killed. In, in fact, you you swear that you hear the sound of a monkey. And also crashing and breaking coming from behind you as uh, boom, somebody else's problem. Barreling through the tree line Found is an albino moose that flips over onto its side and slides across the ground, hurling, uh, hurling Grendel and, uh, and Dorian Gray off of its horns. Um, Tarzan is still kind of surfing it as it slides on its side and sort of bumps into a stump, uh, at which point you hear the moose kind of, and Doolittle, you see it pass out. What the hell? There's a moose in our former grove. My former grove. Doodle, I will say, I will say, Doctor Doodle, that you see that the moose's eye has been savaged. Yes, has been bit rather aggressively. 
Ta Tarzan, see it, how savage is it? Like, is it missing an eye or will it recover? It's not missing an eye, but there is a very visible like bite mark around it. Okay, then, then Tarzan's just gonna say to the moose, be still, brother. And I will run, I will run up to the moose. Uh, does it seem to have sort of relaxed a little bit? It, it seems more like it has sort of ran itself to exhaustion. All right, I'm going to say, hold on. All right. Whew. I'm not, <clears throat> not very well constituted. Uh, not constituted, all right. Oh, be quiet, Polynesia. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, hold on. I start rummaging around in my uh, britches. Uh, and I pull out some restorative ointment. Mm. And I say, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to wipe this on your face there, Moose. Mm. You'll, it'll feel good. As you sort of wipe this ointment onto its eye, um, Grendel, you see that bite you took off begins to heal on the moose as you're sort of like regaining yourself and getting yourself uh, up and, and out into the bushes. Huh. There you go, buddy. Oh. There you go. Mm. We're friends. Oh. oh, my eye. As Dorian Gray, you are uh, sort of laying in the snow. Uh, you're painting luckily uh on top of you your face however on the ground oh this is unbefitting for a gentleman like me what i'm gonna get up take take a peek around you get up you see uh the the hairy man you were with is gone uh dr doolittle is currently uh treating a moose Tarzan is sort of sitting on the stump next to it. Uh, you see a very, very large man and a very, very large blue bull uh, standing in a chopped orchard, as well as a shorter man with him that seemed to be arguing a bit about seeds before you uh, sort of have interrupted their conversation. And a gorilla wearing a like a bowler hat and a nice suit. I'll go up to uh, Dr. Doolittle. Ah, another gentleman out here in the... He looks around. Woods. I'll tip my bowler hat to Mr. Gray. Ah, yes, yes. What's, what's, what seems to be going on out here? Well, me and the boy here, and I'll, I'll pat Tarzan. Uh, we were just trying to prevent some uh, animal atrocities. Oh. Well, you could never be too mean to those poor little creatures, I assume? Ooh. Um, no, are uh, being committed against the animals, you see. Ah. We, well, anyway, wait. We help. Do hold on, Dorian. We help. Dorian, may Animal. Uh, roll 2d6. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, nine. Dor Dorian, you, man, this is a, a wild coincidence because those nice gentlemen you had paid to help bring you up to the great north, they were looking for a white moose. And like, oh. it's just a coincidence that there's two of them. Oh. Who did I pay to take me up here? Just oh, uh, they, they, they called themselves poachers, if you believe it. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. You, know, you seem to remember petty. them getting attacked in the night. Oh. Um, and then you woke up in that cave, so that was weird. Oh. Well, well, anyway, I wish you luck with your animals. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a, a youthful friend out here. Oh, yeah? What yeah. species? Well, he's a, he's a person. Is... Are you saying animals aren't people? Um. <laughs> well. It's a gorilla and a gorilla raised man. 
I mean, I Plato would say that, you know, a bird is in fact a man. Bird, man. But what are you saying? <laughs> Quite. Quite the astute observation, yes. Well, I'm saying it's all it's all how you philosophize things. Are you saying all gorillas look the same? No. Paul it's Bunyan hefts his axe at you. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway, I was um uh, I'm up here to visit uh, an acquaintance my friend told me about. Uh, his name's Dracula. Tells me we Dracula. have quite a lot in common. Yeah, Nobody perfect. knows that name. Ah. Yeah. Perfect. He lives in the uh, frozen north, does he? Uh, somewhere up here. My uh, two friends that I brought up here seem to be uh, missing. Well, more, more so guides. Say, as... say, do you think I could... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, as that conversation is going on, we cut to Grendel in the, uh, in the woods. Grendel, you remember you did eat Dorian Gray, <laughs> Tombstone Dead, along with his two companions. <laughs> I was hungry, <laughs> as as uh, Grendel <laughs> says. We got back the Dorian. He is he is hit. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, you think yeah, you say. could? Um, you know, if you if you know the local area, do you think you could? I could pay you to be my guide. Or any of you. I suppose, for that matter. Meanwhile, John Watson the Eighth can see that that's the person they're looking for. Oh, well, excuse me, gentlemen, while you're talking about trees and not cutting them down or cutting them down. I see the person I'm actually looking for. It's been a pleasure meeting you. I hope you have a divine evening as I'm going to walk on over there with my cane, with my with my nice little can I got going on over there? It's about very fanciful looking. This ape wearing a bowler hat and a nice three piece suit walks over to you, Dorian Gray, with a cane. Well, there we go. A, a man of culture, I can see. I can tell that suit's from Savile Road. Well, thank Indeed you. It is. What, uh, what brings you to these dreary parts? Well, Mr. Gray, you are, in fact, the person I've been looking for. Oh, perfect. At least somebody here knows who I am. And why were you looking for me? You know that, um, sorry, that apple seed that I ate earlier, um, it's clouded my memory momentarily. Um, allow me to consult, I'll allow me to consult my that. journal, uh, allow me to consult my journal as I remember why I'm, why I'm here. As Watson, you consult your journal, you were hired by a one Mr. Brom Stoker to find Dorian Gray. As I look back up to Mr. Gray, oh, ah, my apologies. Are you familiar with a Mr. Brom Stoker? Well, I can't say that I am directly, but the name sounds familiar. I mean, if he knows about me, we must have met in passing, or maybe I'm a acquaintance of one of his friends. Well... He is actually the gentleman that has sent me in your direction, good sir. Um, wow. but, we must, but we must get to the bottom as to why he did send me in your direction. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I'm in sure the middle of their conversation, Tarzan's just gonna like ape up next to uh, to Watson and just stare <laughs> confusedly, <laughs> <laughs> like scratch Double his blinks. head and armpit and stuff at the same time. A doolittle. You actually know Bram Stoker. Do I? I do know him. 
Yes, uh, he hired you once to find one of his most prized bats. Oh, okay. Do I like him? Yeah, he seemed like a good guy. He took care of animals. He seemed, uh, you know, pretty chill. He gave you a nice uh, vintage whiskey. Oh. So you were, and I'll, I'll say this to Dorian. So you were looking for Bram Stoker. Oh, well, I was looking for a bad name. Oh, I no, you walk. weren't looking for Bram Stoker. Only the monkey was. Well, no, the monkey was looking for me for Bram Stoker. Well, oh, I'm so sorry, you, sir. I'll the say an ape. I'll say... Monkey. Yeah, hold on. I'll is, say an ape. Is Watson, like, a monkey or a gorilla or, like, a chimpanzee? Like, what kind of ape are we talking about here? I believe a gorilla. I think we're just using the AI picture Brad had posted. Okay. <laughs> All right. We are... Uh, I am, in fact... Uh, currently conditioned to look like a gorilla, but I am in fact a man. You. My name is Dr. John Watson. Captain Dr. John Watson. Me, Tarzan. Me, ape. And then and uh, I will say to Dr. Ape Watson, together in strong. Ape. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will say to Dr. Watson in ape. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Uh, I'm also a friend of Bram Stoker's. As I'm just going to... <clears throat> I was not born an ape. I am not aware of what you're actually saying, sir. I do speak English. I suppose we could use a more vulgar tongue. Tarzan's gonna Dude, little, uh, you... ape around behind Watson and start picking insects out of his fur <laughs> and eating them. You do remember, Doolittle, that um, that uh, Bram Stoker moved to uh, England recently. Yeah, and we're not in England. No, you're in the Americas. So I do say, well, well, but we're not looking for Bram Stoker. She was sent by Bram Stoker. Yeah. So you come from England then? Oh, yes. London. Ah, uh, terrible place. Smelly. Hmm. Hearing that, we cut again to, to Grendel in the, wo in the woods. England. Grendel is Eng Eng England. Sorry, I need to find the voice again. I try to <laughs> I'll find it. Anyways, um, England. You the word heard that England word resonates with him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That man England. said it. England. The man. Oh, the man. I. Remember. Um, these people are not only talking about England, they're talking about going back to England. In the dark. Behind the characters, you will you will see he's not trying to be stealthy. There is a small. Knot in a stump, a rotten stump. Just a small little knot, about a foot wide, and a head pops out of it, <laughs> and then almost impossibly a shoulder, and then another shoulder, but only one arm. Then out of this tiny knot, a nine-foot-tall, gaunt hairy creature reaches out and stands up and looks at you and says excuse me did you say England I love that all this is going on and just the two Americans are standing and watching it happen <laughs> 
Yes, we we did in fact say England. The name sounds familiar. I am afraid I've been sleeping for a very long time. My name is Grendel, by the way. I met your friend, Mr. Dorian Gray, earlier, and he promised me some caffeine. Do you have caffeine? Dorian Gray does have tea in his pocket. Oh. What what caffeine? I do have a spot of tea. Doc, what caffeine? Oh, um, caffeine is a um. <laughs> yeah, we got two doc. No, you, no, you, Abe, Doc. <laughs> doc, what caffeine? <laughs> It's just in awe. <laughs> <laughs> right. As as this is all okay, hold on. As this is all happening. Um crap. I need more like suspenseful music. Is this it? A man rushes out of the woods, a mountain man. He comes running over. Johnny! Paul! Johnny! Paul! What is he's it? He's covered in blood and he's missing an arm. <laughs> Paul! As you look at it, it's Eli uh, Granger. He's the uh, foreman of the nearby sawmill. What happened to Eli? Eli! Oh, he, he falls to the ground. Oh, it's horrible! What happened, Eli? A beast. A beast. I'm, I'm cradling beast. his head. It's not the sawmill. The rest of them. Grizzly. Jed. Grizzly. Coyote, they're all in danger. Are you you got to get there. Real animals? You got to get there. Pop, pop. I, it's, it's getting dark. I, I Stay awake. Apple seed into you. Stay awake, Eli. Jo Johnny puts an apple seed in his mouth and closes it. The apple he, will take you. Doctor, he, take, he, he takes the apple. He closes his eyes. As you see a small sapling sort of make its way out of his chest and grow into an <laughs> apple tree. Oh, well, Bunyan hoping... looks over at Johnny Appleseed and he's like, good God. I thought, I thought it was the control of the living one, Garrett. Jo no, Johnny, you know this only affects people who are dead, so he did die. It doesn't matter. He was what the hell dying. Did you do, Johnny? He was Eli. dead, man. He Eli was dead the moment he came into our area. That Hold only on. happens when somebody dies and passes on to the great apple tree to become the fertilizer for the next generation of apples. As this happens, you're heartbroken as both of you reminisce of one important event that you had with Eli. 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 What happened? No, I'm, I'm waiting to hear it. What is the one important event you guys had with Eli? Oh, Eli. Eli, uh, Eli shared moonshine with Johnny. He shared his moonshine. His, uh, he, he, he made an apple pie moonshine and gave it to Johnny. What other honor is there to the great apple? And Paul... Eli gave Paul Bunyan his first axe. And he holds and now it he's now. Gone. Now it's just a it's just a hand axe now, but you hear a bang as something breaks off in the distance over by the sawmill and you see what looks like smoke billowing out. Oh, you know what must be done, right? Babe, let's go. Mm. Imagine like the group just looking it off as Donnie and Paul are doing like the anime slow walk away to the run towards the sawmill. Be right back. We've got some animals to kill. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Had to send some people <laughs> to the great apple. Doolittle starts following along. Excuse me, I don't know that we have to resort to violence. Surely we can figure out. You little, better you way. interfere with us. I swear to God, I'll send you to the great apple tree in the sky myself. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. Right, babe? I'll or the apple moon. tree. I'm going to look at babe and I'm going to speak ox to her. And I'm going to say, you would kill a fellow animal? I babe mean, if nods. it pissed me off enough, yeah. <laughs> What have they done to deserve such a thing? <laughs> yes. Hell, I don't know, but if it's a fucking dipshit, then sure. Well, how do you know if it's a dipshit? <laughs> well, if I'm killing it, it is. So, you know, how about you get out of the way, little man? I got to avenge my good friend, Eli. He gave me oats and stuff one time. I was going to ask, what's, what was his story with Eli? <laughs> it was great. They were big oats. Well? Uh, Johnny Appleseed. Do I have my animals with me? You do. All right. You guys will see a coalition of animals forming around Doolittle. I have it's, a... It's a really dramatic, like... Yeah. A like, group of animals all <laughs> marching in. It's like a squirrel and a turtle. It's a... It's a... It's a duck. A... Come parrot. A monkey, an owl, a pig, a dog, and a rat. And we walk single file like the seven dwarves, and we <laughs> and we follow you guys to the sawmill in order to preserve animal life. Uh, Tarzan will be in the line right behind the <laughs> ape. Yeah. I'm clicking all these musics. I don't know what they fucking are. It's kind of jungly. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. As all these uh, animals sort of surround him, there's a lot of mundane animals that have sort of <laughs> coalesced. They're not very little. impressive. They're not it very impressive. It does not look as badass as he made it seem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, jo Johnny Appleseed. Yeah. You'll... Feel some breath on the back of your neck and you'll turn around and Grendel will be standing right behind you, hunched over. And they'll say, Excuse me, sir. Did you say that there was a hunt? On? Yeah, you keep walking with us, you can eat whatever the fuck cactus on mill and kill Eli. Otherwise, don't stop me and Paul. Come on now. Mm. By the by, what's your name? Then, then the hunt is on. My yeah. name is Grendel. Cool. Don't slow us down, Grendel. Pleasure to meet you, by the way. Shame it had to meet on this sad day. Mm, a pleasure. Shame. I am Shame. sorry about your friend, but the weird knew the time of his death long before you or even I were born. Sounds like you talk about the great apple tree. Perhaps. It has many names. Yeah, the great apple tree. And that's it. Starts sounding like heresy otherwise. Heresy. What does that yeah. mean to me? What does it mean to I don't you? Know. Oh. I have no idea. I just it heard about it in my dreams. Eye. As you guys make your way there, um, you will be uh, appearing from the northern part of the map. Actually, no, never mind, the southern part of the map, where you guys are from. Um, you hear a clanking and a rumbling uh, as the silhouette of a beast is ahead of you, but then it starts to make shape. It's sort of gnawing uh, 
chunks of metal scraping against one another. Paul, you know what this thing is. You fought a similar thing before. It's a Sawmaster 5000. Oh. A sawing robot. <laughs> It's steam powered machine body churning up toxic coal uh, as it's chopped this ox in half. Uh, blood and, and lumber is just strewn about. Grizzly is, is maimed uh, really badly and seems to be making his way towards this uh, hut. As this large machine turns to you, seeing you come up, you hear something over the intercoms. Well, 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 if it isn't Paul Bunyan. Oh, hell. I, I won't lose to you this time. Uh, as it lifts its arms, revving its saws. I'm gonna cut your legend short. Babe, uh, let's kick his ass. Mm. And we're gonna roll for initiative. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hey y'all. It's been a hey. long time. How the hell do I get these giant icons on my screen smaller? Oh, that's right. Go to that the cog wheel. Go yeah. to audio and video. Video yeah. display and turn it to names only. Ooh, it's thank you. That's so much better. That's so awful. <laughs> well, that's that's a f feature. <laughs> well, that way you get to I, see I get... everybody's avatar. You know, eventually, eventually we'll hook those up to proper, like animated avatars. By the way, the gentleman's name is William Shroud. Which gentleman? Uh, who is piloting the? Sawmaster 5000. Oh, there's Just a guy like a mech. Yes. He is he in is this steam powered machine. The real tragedy is this ox. isn't An the ox. loss of life, it's the loss of jobs at the sawmill. Yeah. That's true. Although, I guess if you kill everyone at the sawmill, then there would be less. It reduces like, unemployment rate. Unemployed. Yeah. So, just a, a little recap of what's going on. Um, the man over by where the robot is um, is injured uh, and is trying to get inside of this building. Um, as you're coming up, you see over here at the actual sawmill, Jed um, has become pinned underneath this log as it is slowly pulling him into the water. Um, and then Coyote uh, over here is stuck on a log um, but more horrifyingly to Dr. Doolittle, there are animals, other oxes about that if this thing decides it wants to just smash shit, could, there's could put them in danger. There's north and there's an ox down south here. Yeah. All right. All right, is everybody on the initiative? Let's see. Grendel, Dr. Watson, Doolittle. I think everybody's on. Are we... Okay, I think everybody's here. All right, Tarzan, you're Damn, the first one up. Seven, <laughs> Tarzan. Some might say that Tarzan is alert. <laughs> Tarzan. Tarzan, this large metal machine. Yeah, Tarzan's gonna walk forward his full 40 feet. He's gonna attempt to intimidate him by beating his chest. Alright. <laughs> as uh as that happens, the machine just is just the person in a year going, ah, ah, you think I'd be intimidated by a monkey and pastor? And then revs his saw. Tarzan ape. And that that's Tarzan's turn. All right. Uh, next is Doolittle. All right. 
Old Doolittle here. I'm going to... Now, I don't want to have my Menagerie be too overpowered, so I'm going to give... I think the way that the... that the... Uh, that the Ranger Companion works is I can tell them to do one thing, right? Uh, uh, yes. Which is no action required, but I'm going to I'm gonna command for this round, I'm going to say, Chi-Chi, untie that oxen so that it can escape. And Chi-Chi no, has I a need, movement. I need like speed. a cheat sheet for them. I know. <laughs> cheat sheet for cheat sheet. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's got 30 <laughs> movement speed, so he's gonna he's going to uh, he's actually gonna dash, and he's gonna climb up on this ox and start uh, start trying to untie it. But uh, that his action was dashing, so he can't he can't untie it in this. And I am going to whip out my cane, my walking stick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna head this direction there who's this do i know this is that is that tarzan That's tarzan uh, you know like tarzan is he was with you <laughs> it looked like a chick <laughs> hey that is a classic cover that is currently in the public domain for art so yeah yes. no it's good all right uh i'm gonna men use have my... naked shoulders too that's true. And look at the he's look at them look at them traps. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He's been doing pull-ups. I'm going to use my bonus action to to cast Shillelagh on my Oh, that's a long one. No, I didn't go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Upon my oh, uh sorry. upon my on your staff. Staff. Uh and then I'm going to use my action to run up here and get sort of squared up with Tarzan here. Even right. though this is a very bad <laughs> idea in terms of my AC, but <laughs> to, to tank, to tank a tank. But <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Well, uh, before we get to Rachel, uh, Nate, on the yeah. character list, you'll actually see Babe the Blue Ox underneath uh, Paul Bunyan. Oh, I see it now. Uh, Come on, all right, Babe. Watson. All right, Watson's going to step with his cane forward, getting a clear line of shot as he's... He'll go right here, making certain that there's no one in the way. As he just stands up, he's going to hold his cane out to support him. He's going to reach inside of his inner coat lapel like a gentleman and then just fucking pull out a revolver as he's going to point it at the, at the back. <laughs> This ape pulls out a gun. This ape's gonna pull the fucking gun. Let's go! As he misses. As he, as it, boom, fires this revolver from quite a good distance away. It just clinks off of the armor of this thing. As he goes, you really think that would have done something? Maybe I should have been worried about the other man who pretends to be a monkey. By the Queen's good graces, sir, what you're doing is not legal. As I'm, that's gonna end me. This is America! Home of the free! We should, we should have taken it back. <laughs> that ends me. Go to Grundle. Alright. As we cut to Grundle. Grundle. Randall looks at uh, Johnny Appleseed and goes, What is America? I can buy now. Uh, Grendel's going to move 10 feet here and he's going to wrench the wheel off of this cart. All right. Make a, uh, make um, a strength check. Like an athletics. Oh, you want me, you want an athletics? Yeah. Well, let you do. It. I guess it's the same. So only a twelve. A twelve is you. 
uh, you realize, Grendel, something is strange about this wheel. Like, compared to other wagons you've seen, it has this, like, strange silvery Grendel has like pin in ever it. seen a wagon. <laughs> no, you've seen carts, but this has like a like a the thing they make the sharp swords out of holding the wheel on. Normally it's just a wooden peg, but this time it's like a metal sword, but tiny. Are you just describing a nail? Yes. Can, can he pull it out? To you can make. I'll let you make another. Off? I'll let you make another one to uh, to pull the nail out. It's okay. more like a Carter pin. Another is what I was strength trying check. To. Yeah. You just very easily pull the pin out, and you can feel the wheel get loose. No. Sometimes brute strength isn't the way, but sometimes it is. And uh, 20, 25, 30. he's going to heft the wheel. And Tarzan, you hear behind you, you might look back. Uh, this creature is swinging around in circles with this wheel like it's a discus and he's going to throw it at this machine <laughs> uh, Tarzan ducks and the wheel flies through the air I'm sorry please say that I was again. just saying Tarzan ducks instinctively <laughs> it was not yes, to be so hit the wheel goes flying over his head alright so this will be he had disadvantage because of the range. Oh! Uh, well, it's a disadvantage, so 15. 15 will hit it. Okay. So, the thing is going to fly straight at him, and it's going to deal 12. And, oops, I missed this surprise attack damage. Um, oh. Mm -hmm. I'll pop it up real quick. Sorry, new character. Here we go. I don't know why. I feel She's like I should do play this because you asked damage what America to him. was. <laughs> <laughs> See you fling shock with this fucking wheel straight into this robot. You think that would poof as the robot's head spins around. You hear the guy inside like tumbling around. <laughs> this is America, bitch. Yeah. Um, as this happens, uh, he is going to react to instinct. So something is going to happen basically because of this. Because he is rattling around in there, I need you to roll 2d6. Who? Me? Uh, you. An eight. All right. He, uh, you hear him smack into controls and things as the robot sort of rides backwards and gets stuck kind of halfway in the water, half not in it, um, as it's sort of just grinding up mud. Ah, blasted! Um, he is sawing at things and he is cutting uh, sort of uh, things and churning wood. Uh, the mixed part of this is that uh, the wheel is destroyed. All right, the wheel is destroyed. All right. That is Grendel's turn. All right, he is currently stuck at the moment. Um, so he is like, Ben, you wrestle the controls? And he's like just swinging wildly uh, these whirling chainsaws. Um, you feel like if you get close to him, he might try and hit you. Uh, so I will put a little red dot on him. As we get to Dorian Gray. Oh, these. 
these troglodytes as Dorian Gray is going to run uh, <laughs> and seek safety in the building over here. As you run that way, you see Jed stuck underneath this log as it is slowly being pulled in. As he's like, uh, you, sir, help me, please help me. Oh, don't worry, Jed, I'll help you. Oh, thank you. You notice his name tag says Jed because he didn't tell you that. Yeah, yes, yes. All right, that'll be uh, that'll be my turn. <laughs> oh, it'd be easier if you if you just loosen up that painting on you. You you probably could have run faster. Oh no, no, it's no, <laughs> no trouble at all. Oh no, oh, oh my my legs. Oh, they'll be fine. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed. Uh, Johnny's gonna move up. And he's going to start speaking in some some weird otherworldly language as he's going to In Apple cast, Tongue? In Apple <laughs> Tongue. Apple tongue. Uh, as he speaks, uh, uh, fuck, this, this one, yeah, Dissonant Whispers. Dissonant Whispers, sort of whispering into the, uh, into the robot to the man inside. Uh, yeah. He is going to make a wisdom save. He <laughs> fails it. All right, he's gonna take. I'm um, the second level. I should have declared that before I roll. Uh, Forty-six. Uh, what? Zero successes. What the heck? I don't know. That was weird. Oh, I put F for some reason. Oh. What? Well, now, now we know something. F for fail. Yeah. Zero successes. Four. 14 psychic. All right, I need you to roll 2d6 also. Oh, you're asking a lot for me. Eight. Eight. All right, it works. You hear him in there go, Oh, fuck, is that Johnny Appleseed? <laughs> and he, you hear the tracks like rev up, smoke and coal begin billowing out of it as it revs full speed um, and just barrels into this building, smashing into it. Um, he kind of underestimated how much power he needed to get out of the mud. It knocks uh, poor Grizzly, though, over this way as he cracks into a rock and falls prone. I'm coming for you. As I, as <laughs> oh, 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 fuck is I, oh, God, Johnny Appleseed, I can't fucking. <laughs> <laughs> this is Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan looks over at Babe. He says, get his ass. And uh, Babe uh, starts roaring like an ox does. Huh? And, mm. uh... And Chuck uh, <laughs> dashes up here, as does uh, Paul Bunyan. Hey, he can move. Uh, I think he can move sixty. Can he see? Can he see this guy from here? A uh, who? Or is there cover? Can Paul Bunyan see uh, the enemy? Yeah, you can see him. Is, right uh, now, his back is to you because he revved forward and smashed into the building. I see. I see. Uh, let me just test something real fast. Oh, never mind. It, wait, what's his name again? Uh, it is William Shrout. William Shrout. What kind of history do these two have? Um, years ago, William Shrout, uh, here, we'll play something. Years ago, William Shrout made, uh, a machine. Mm -hmm. uh, called the Sawmaster One uh, to basically replace you. Um, you were, you know, the the best chopper of, of American lumber and whatnot. He wanted to beat you, so he made this huge coal-powered uh, saw that could cut through trees. Um, but he funded it through pretty nefarious means, and he was cutting down every type of tree. Um... And he eventually got his way up to the Sawmaster 1000, mm. at which point he challenged you to a chopping contest, uh, which you handily won. 
But then he challenged you with the Sawmaster 2000, which again, you handedly won. And then the 3000. Now that one, he cut down Appleseed's orchard and Appleseed threatened to kill him. Uh, sacrifice him to a great apple. You really had nothing to do with that one. <laughs> but the 4,000, oh boy, <laughs> that was a close race. And now <laughs> this is the 5,000. Although it seems like his tactics have changed rather than ask you to a competition, he was just destroying the sawmills. Um, this large machine appears to be almost like a portable sawmill. Uh, one that he could obviously take over your business uh, pretty handedly. Mm. Mr. Shrout. Yes? You're going to have to pay for trying to take over my business. Oh, you're going to pay for ruining my good name. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold babe back and then uh he let's see he he does a oh man right <laughs> never mind I'm gonna save it for later <laughs> okay uh next up is Tarzan Tarzan is gonna move forward. Okay, with his 40 feet, he could basically get to this uh, this dead ox. And he's gonna mm -hmm. dip his fingers in its blood and like paint war paint on his face. And just, he's just gonna utter, ape, no kill ape, but metal ape, die. And uh, And I'll just, I'll, I'll pull out my father's knife and get ready. All right. <laughs> um, oh, yes, top of the order. So one thing that does happen is, Dorian, you see old Jed getting pulled closer into the water. Uh -oh. Help! Help! Um, and uh, Paul, you see... Coyote Harper, because of all that that water rippling and stuff, he has now fallen in the water between the logs, which you know can be a deadly thing. Uh, you know, logs cracking into one another, and this poor guy is stuck between them. Oh, man. Uh, as we continue down the order, Dr. Doolittle. All right. Uh, so first of all, Chi-Chi... Got a free, boss! Yeah, Chi-Chi's going to untie this ox. And stand by. Uh, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my free action to order. Let's see, which oxen are in most danger? Maybe this one. That ox doesn't seem to be able to leave. It seems like this log is sort of lodged in the mud in a weird way. Like um, you can tell a track went over it, so this machine must have rolled over it and wedged yeah. it. All right, I'm going to call out to uh, Tutu. And I'm going to say, Tutu! Go take care of that ox! Uh, which is my owl, which has a 60 move, uh, sixty foot fly speed. So with a dash, uh, she it wasn't clear in the uh, in, in the cannon. Uh, yeah. We'll go 60. Oh wait, that was 60, but I, she can dash. So I'm gonna go another 60. He just goes zooming off to try and get to this ox and make sure that we free it in time. Uh, as I am going to run up here, 30 feet to this ox. Is this ox is pretty dead? Yeah, it's super dead. Tarzan is Babe's wiping alive. its blood like war paint. Yeah, this one right here. I will. Uh, and you hear Babe look, you see Babe look down at the ox and then look up and like, this is, our, this is for Henry, you metal bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the ox is just like, 
a, a bigger Shibethany. <laughs> All right. I'm going to... I'm going to use my action to dash again. But I'm going to kind of go up this direction. Because I want to make sure... I want to try to position myself between the oxen and the creature here. Yeah, you also if I just see run a, up to a it, maimed it, man laying on the yeah. ground. I, he's but more no about the ox. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but, um, yeah, I, I don't want to run up to this guy because if I use my action to run up to him, then he'll just hit me. Yeah. So that would be my turn. <laughs> Dr. Watson. All right. Um, explain these, like, the log things over here. There's a big X over them. There are a bundle of logs. Um, most of them have been cut open, so there's just kind of like a pile of logs. But are they standing taller than the fallen tree? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my great ape ability as I'm going to get a running start, and I'm going to leap onto here. All right, you jump up, sort of kipping up multiple logs to get to the top of them. As... Again, I'm just gonna shoot, because I have a gun in my hand. <laughs> All right. All right, let's, let's see if I'm successful this time. I'm, I'm gonna try to aim more for, for like, where there's been more damage. 14. 14. Clink! It it just barely. You were about to hit the glass, but it turned its head uh, at the last minute. Uh, as he's kind of pissed off at uh, at our boy Paul here, mm -hmm. um, uh, he is going to reactively react, but he can't get any closer to Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> so he goes, "You as a, all right." I'm not going to stop either. It's fuck the bull. Uh, and you hear it kook, go into reverse and, and just revving backwards, um, going over towards Babe and making a swipe with its saw blade. Oh, he gets him. For 11. Brr. You'll pay for that, Strout. Oh, you'll pay. For all the money I had to spend on these saw masters. <laughs> God, I'm so fucking stupid. I defeated the last 5,000 or 4,999. <laughs> this one won't be any different. Damn it! Is that it for Watson? Yes, that's it for me. All right, Grendel. Grendel is going to simply use his action to dash, just loping, like almost in a uh, with his like he goes down on like his three limbs and the lopes. to here and, and that will I believe be his turn all right uh, the only thing that happens on his turn now that there is actually people near him is uh his blades whirl ah. oh it's supposed to be at the start of its turn 15 dex save. Uh, start of Sawmaster yeah. 5000's turn? Or... Well, it is the start yeah. of its turn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it is. Oh, at the start of, it yeah, okay. It, it is turn, written so. right. Um, yes. So we make our dex saves. Yeah. Make it, babe. I didn't Oof. make it. Fortunately, both of you take uh, 13 slashing damage as uh, basically the top half of it just starts whirling around and 
slicing with these chainsaws, kind of in a 360 around it. Um, uh, Brindle and Dr. Doolittle, it's very close to you, but does not quite hit you. I imagine that ah! part is completely destroyed, as well as the fucking yes. bull. As blood and viscera from the bull is shot everywhere. Oh, oh God, I'm gonna... Oh, I think I'm gonna... <laughs> you can hear him acting inside. Uh, Dorian. Jed. Help! I'm coming. And I'm going to run up and try to try to pull him to safety. All right. Um, how are you going to attempt to, to free him? Uh, or pull him to safety? Just like Raw's, Raw's strength. It. Um, I'll, how is he tangled up? Uh, basically, the log is rolling over him, and it's caught in his like um, his leg. Mm. Well, like a proper gentleman, I'm going to see if I can undo his pants a little bit to get him unstuck. Hurry! Wrong. <laughs> Pick a slight a hand. Yeah. Or no, attack. That works. As you you unbuckle his overalls and at the last second pull him to safety. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, gentlemen. You're a true gentleman. Oh, yes, yes. Don't, don't mention it. Uh, be careful. It's unstable, it's sawmill. Um, as you do true. notice, uh, water is sort of splashing up into the sawmill. Oh. Um, you get the impression the sawmill is tilting. Uh-oh. You see a droplet fly through the air and touch the painting on your back. And you can feel it burning almost. Oh. All right, he's going to... Is that an action? Yeah. He can move a little bit. Close to yeah. The but the rest of his movement... You oh, should okay. really get that painting varnished. Oh yes, yes, yes. Good, good call, sir. As as they like, scramble up, <laughs> it's Johnny Appleseed. Uh, Johnny is gonna style an image at will, and he's gonna put a copy of himself right here. Oh, uh, where? Uh, I think I put on another token. Yeah, right there. Yeah, just. Okay. And then he'll start whistling and slowly walking towards the guy trying to intimidate him. Oh, God. Uh, I assume that would be an intimidation check. Yeah, I'll give you advantage on it, too. Cool. 14. 14. <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck. Listen, Johnny, it was a mistake. I was trying to clear off a spot for us, me and Paul, to have our competition that year. Johnny starts sh both Johnny's are uh, one's whistling, the other one's miming whistling, but they're both shaking in their head. Oh, That's it. Oh, fuck. It's Paul. Paul, uh... Paul's enraged because poor babe has been slashed multiple times. And he unleashes his titan of timber and uh, grows <laughs> to be gargantuan. Him and babe both do it. Whoa! <laughs> As both of them grow to the same size of this robot. Maybe a hair, a head taller. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. Babe. Okay, man, that's cheating! That's cheating! You're gonna die, Shrout. Does, uh, has Shrout used his reaction this, this round? Um, he has not. Okay. He has reactive instinct, which works a little bit differently. Okay, okay. Well, Babe just goes for the gore. Mm. 23 will hit. And uh, 
Oops. And, For some reason uh, it's private. I have to change that. I don't know why I did. But... Oh, it's because uh, it says two GM. That's my bad. Yeah, I, I've switched it over. All right. Uh, but yeah, he had a twenty-three. He right. did twelve damage. And uh, Paul Bunyan, because this is America, he has a gun, and he pulls yeah. out his shotgun and points it right at, at, at Mr. Shroud's machine and uh, wielding his axe in one hand and a shotgun in the other he fires the double barreled shotgun which I don't know if that hits it, it blasts this 30 foot cone just straight in the air it clanks off of its metal armor does not seem to to penetrate this robot kills a shitload of ducks, though. Oh, and with his <laughs> other... <laughs> <laughs> There's there ducks that just fall around. <laughs> Where are the ducks? Is they it falling out of the sky? Thing. Is Tutu safe from the cone? <laughs> I yes, think they're just that range. He's high up. He fired it really high in the air because he's so big. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dead ducks fall. was all ready to help you. that ox, but now that there's injured ducks, wounded ducks. Doolittle. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Well, <laughs> tell them, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they won't hold it against you. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed has a single tear run down his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> the most American thing he's ever seen. <laughs> I walked away. What's the most American thing Johnny Appleseed's ever seen? <laughs> Paul Bunyan pulled out a shotgun and shot, <laughs> and shot <laughs> some ducks out of the sky. <laughs> Is it a sawed off shotgun? Double yes. barreled. Double barreled. Double Dr. barreled. Dr. Doolittle, Dr. Doolittle is very <laughs> upset about this. Tarzan doesn't know why, but he feels pride. Dr. Watson feels pride, just kind of stare at, like, how proud this man is of his nation. He respects oh my God. that. That's what happens. As you pull out your shotgun to shoot him, his saw cuts the barrels off, Ooh. making it a sawed-off shotgun. <laughs> Even more American. Yeah. Well... Paul Bunyan doesn't like that he missed with a shotgun, but he he uh, he still got old old reliable, which he wields with one hand because he's gargantuan, and he brings down the pain onto uh, Mr. Shroud over here. That's gonna hit twelve. Twelve as you boom. Le you cut this huge gash in the top compartment of it, um, sort of exposing the head chamber that he is in, as he's like, that is sick. Kyle, you're, you're not gonna try and really kill me this time, right? I'm I mean, gonna I'm kill just... you, Shroud. <laughs> Fuck. You, you didn't eat his seeds, did you, the apple seeds? I didn't eat them. <laughs> I hate this country. <laughs> um, as this is happening, you hear Paul Coyote yell out ah! as timbers smack around him, and then he goes quiet. Oh, no. um, and you do not see him resurface. Um, Jed over here is going to grab you, uh, Dorian. Here, let me help you out, City Slicker. Uh, and he's going to, like, fireman carry you out of this building as it collapses behind him. Uh, Grizzly is bleeding very, very profusely. Uh, top of the order, though, is Tarzan. All right. Uh, covered in the blood of a dead ox and now some of his own blood. 
He's gonna make a stab with his dad's knife at the metal ape. <laughs> Just that, like it's treads, or are you gonna act? He doesn't you, know. Yeah! He doesn't know what he's doing. He's just <laughs> he's just stabbing at it. You see Tarzan, you leap towards it and just start stabbing at its metal hide. Uh, but this beast, this uh, animal that you've never seen before, it seems like it's just nigh impervious to your your knife. Well, Tarzan. We'll get a little frustrated. It even resisted the thunder gun. Yeah. Tar Tarzan, in a bit of rage, will just let out a ooh <laughs> and uh, follow it up with some punches to see if that does anything. All right. Yeah, as both of you, you just start grabbing shit on it and ripping out like pipes and vents. Steam starts to just escape from this machine as you're just ripping shit out of it. Okay, he's and gonna... Tarzan, you realize it's yeah. more like a beetle. I'm gonna have him make a uh, a dex save to see if I can knock him prone. I think he's only got. A, right. I think he's only got to hit twelve. As you, no, with that, you're just ripping shit out. <laughs> Steam and coal begin billowing out of it pretty rapidly. And you grab it and try to, to flip it over to knock it prone. Um, but little do you know, one of the treads snaps and there's a loud pop as the top half of the thing just completely flips over on its side and boom, lands flat on the ground. It puttering oh, out the last little bit of steam that it had in it. Pa, 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 pa. Uh, Tarzan starts looking Ooh. over the body for flesh to be eaten in order to honor the kill. Crawling out of this this beetle's brain is a man. Uh, a rather, like, uh, thin-looking gentleman. Um, he's, like, coughing as he comes out. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's in my mouth. Me save you. Uh, from mental oh. ape. Oh, no need, no need. You just, oh, okay, okay. As you grab him. Mental ape eat men. And I'm gonna show it to Paul Bunyan. I'm gonna show Paul Bunyan. <laughs> Paul Bunyan picks uh, Mr. Shroud up by his scruff and uh. holds him, I assume, about 15 feet in the air. Yeah. Now, 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 Paul. Well, don't you Johnny. Johnny Appleseed, what do we do with this man? Easy. As Johnny walks up and lunges an Appleseed into his chest. No! Uh, uh, uh. Um, <laughs> we'll just say it has. He, uh, uh, and he goes kind of limp for a second. As you see little roots before his skin sort of heals over where the apple seed is. Uh, oh, uh, oh, hey, hey, Johnny, how's everything going? I wanted the apple tree. I didn't want a minion. What are we gonna do oh. with them? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I not being? Oh, Paul. Oh, hey, sorry, man. You know I. Can I, don't I walk know why up and I... whack him on the head with my cane? <laughs> well, Paul is holding him. I guess he's holding him down. Yeah, I, I, I actually lower him so that Doctor Doolittle can give him a whack. Yeah. I give him a whack. Like a oh well, I just <clears throat> and he falls over. <laughs> it was. Uh, I will say that it was um, non-lethal damage though, because it's bludgeoning. So I just, I just wanted to give him a little thwack for right. for killing that oxen. Why'd you kill <laughs> Eli? He's unconscious. I I kind of like shake him, and uh, you know. Hit oh, is this guy oh. still bleeding out over here, or is he alive? He is. is okay. <laughs> Doolittle just let him. Yeah, Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> yes. If you wouldn't mind, would you save Mister Grizzly over there? 
Actually, I don't know. I you just you shot a bunch roll, of ducks. I need you to roll two d six. You need me to two roll two d six? Yes. In fact, I need you and Doolittle to roll two d six. It just said unrecognized command. Oh. I roll oh. an eight. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Doolittle, you you confront him with this thing. You had to spend all this time rescuing these ducks that were heavily injured, which you did. Yeah. As Grizzly is definitely dead. <laughs> at this point. But I did manage oh, no. to save the ducks. You did manage to save the ducks. You see them like very very sort of limp away before sort of flapping and flying off. Um, You're lucky. That could have went poorly. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Sorry. we cut away really quick to Grendel, who sees an unconscious uh, coyote ha or harper in the water. His head is bleeding. It looks like he got whacked in the head. Grendel will fish him up kind of halfway out of the water and right. uh, kind of slap onto his face, uh, try and wake him up, revive him. Uh, he looks pretty unconscious. Hello, pet. I am uh, afraid that the weird has come for you today. I knew big... He'll I slap him big, one more time. Oh, I knew... I knew this day would come. That Bigfoot would come and eat this me whole day. in one big bite. Mm. I'm afraid just, you are mistaken. Just in... Just in... I'm already me full. in one big bite, you dang Bigfoot. I'm afraid I've already eaten. And Grendel will punch him in the face. <laughs> and then oh. with his one then with his one arm he'll push him down under the water. <laughs> you push him down. And then and finish him kind off. of squeaking through being obscured by these logs. He'll pull him down and till the deed is done. <laughs> and then he'll crawl from log to log back towards whatever's happening. As Paul has sort of shaken awake, uh, awake William Shroud again. Um, if the party wants to meet up around, they can. Um, he, oh, oh. Oh, hey, Paul. I don't know. I don't know why, but I feel like just telling you everything you want to know. Tell me. All right. What you want to know? Why'd you <laughs> kill Eli? Oh, because I, I didn't know how to drive this machine. You telling me it was an accident? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just kind of wanted to smash up the place. I didn't really expect to, you know, kill people. You know, the damn fucking Frankenstein, he didn't give me a manual for the thing. Who? I thought you'd been building these machines yourself. Oh, no, no. I just paid for them. I lied about building them. You know, it's like everybody mm. does. I just took an invention that was in Europe and I sold it here like I had built it. Mm. It's very dishonest of you. It's not I the know. American way. I know, and it's weird. Like, I, I feel just like I can't lie to you right now. But, you know, that's that's what I did. It's, you know, capitalism. Hmm. Frankenstein, huh? Yeah, he's a real weirdo. We should put a but stop to him. Sold me a big machine to cut down trees. Hmm. Did you uh, happen to chop down any apple trees? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Johnny. 
I cut down <laughs> apple trees. I uh, and sort of like in payment, I gave him some of the seeds and I gave him some of your blood from the last time we had our big. Uh, you thing. gave him my remember, blood. Yeah. I remember when I cut you and I was like, ah, oh, darn, sorry, bud. And then I took your blood in a vial and shipped it off to Transylvania. Ah, geez, that was weird. I did. I did. I did think that was, you know, I, you were going to catch on, but you never did. Hmm. Uh, now that I think about it, it's a little, a little awkward. Who, who did you send? Why did you send my blood to Transylvania? Oh, he wanted it as like part of the payment for this next big robot I was going to use. Oh, Doctor Frankenstein. Wanted me to, yeah. Oh. I'm gonna be honest, Paul. I wanted to kill you. Mm. Paul goes back from like scratching his head and thinking back to like angry and mean mugging. Yeah, you know, I normally I'd lie about this thing and I'd tell you like, oh, no, I didn't want to kill you. We're just, you know, helpful competition. But like for some reason, I just can't lie right now. And I wanted to kill you and I wanted to eat your, a bit of your bull because I was kind of curious what it tasted like. Uh, and then I was going to, you know, chop down the forest and build like a big city here. Um and then, like, make it easy for us in Canada to, like, you know, have people come back and forth. Oh. And, like, put a lot of things in place so, like, people couldn't build walls between us. Oh. Oh, sounds I, like we're about to I kill you. I will say, friend, that blue is not the best of flavors. Yeah, I thought that, too. Is your bull rotted on the inside? No. Babe has a taste, heart of gold. Does it taste she has gold in her heart? Man, take that axe gold chopper up. Take it out. A uh, delicious uh, <laughs> flavor. Paul Bunyan has had enough of this. And he <laughs> hurls a uh, shroud to the ground. And ah! he commands Babe to trample him to death. <laughs> oh! Ah! Starts in oh! cheers and ape. <laughs> babe, <laughs> babe just grinds him into a pulp into the ground. <laughs> As you guys I find myself in good company, laugh and laugh, having <laughs> heroically defeated William Shroud and his saw master five thousand. And crushed him to a pulp. Um, setting up a, a sort of strange mystery. Who is this Dr. Frankenstein? And what mm. did he, why did he make this machine? Why did he want Paul Bunyan's blood and Johnny Appleseed's seeds? And I guess mm. the rest of y'all have other mysteries <laughs> that I have set up. Very curious. Oh, Paul, you also look to the side and you see Coyote is dead. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he killed them all. He did kill them all. But Jed's still alive. Definitely. But Jed, Jed is still alive. Is. And the ducks. And the ducks. Heroically saved. DM, I, I was I, quacked I was for certain for just a second that you'd give him another random roll and the robot would run over those ducks. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a threat that was going to appear had he survived another round. <laughs> um, but as you're all sort of standing there chatting about. Uh, fuck, I don't know how to do this. I just thought about it. <laughs> William Shroud, he's laying there in a pulp. That's it. He's laying there <laughs> in a pulp. This is some real Mad Labs shit. Uh, and he goes, Oh, by the way, before I die. Yes. I did frame you for smashing up all them things. You and Johnny. 
What things? All the sawmill. How could you frame me? Uh, well, you're a big man and you chop trees. I mean, it, you don't got to put two and two together. You're a wanted man, Paul and Johnny. Wanted, the most wanted men in the United States of America. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This is my <laughs> home. Where am I going to go? You, you won't even be able to show your face in this country and Canada again. <laughs> Don't you chaps have federalism here? You can Wait. just cross the state lines. He didn't say anything about the great country of Mexico. So oh, Mexico too! Look, and yeah. he pulls uh, out a, a <laughs> he pulls out a wanted poster that's in Spanish. <laughs> Necesito. Uh, that checks out. I can't read it. <laughs> North, North but, Central and Lower America. He didn't say yeah. anything about Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh. You'll well, never be able to show your face in this country again. Uh, Shit, we're pretty recognizable too, what with my stature and babe's hue. I mean, I'm pretty, I, I'm not that recognizable, but Cuba, we could go to Cuba. You're recognizable. Every, they, every, every elementary school in the country is taught about you. I know. No, and what, and to what regard are they taught about? But head. Well, you're Johnny Appleseed, the <laughs> famous. Apple planter. The famous apple warlock. <laughs> we all know that you work for the government planting apple seeds to spread land. Johnny starts over their... punching him. How dare you say I work for the government? How dare you? How dare you work for the great apple tree? <sighs> I'm dead this time. <laughs> just I... hurry up and die. Honestly, I... I planted a tree and you should just, you're more youthful dead. Oh shit, now... I got to see Bigfoot before I died. Now, now, Mr. Appleseed. Pleases me. Mr. Appleseed, Mr. Mr. Bunyan. Now, um, I do have some service members that I'm familiar with when I served my time in the war. Uh, I'm what pretty. War? You know, the, the the Great War overseas. Which war? They're all great. Well, the one across the big pond. That's pond? No, no. The, the, the great ocean. Ape war and ocean. jungle. Sure, that one. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, where they killed the god the sea then, so. Yes, um, that's a good one. What? Well, what? In, my t in my time serving the great queen, I, um... Who? Uh, the queen. Um... That uh, I anyway, I know some service members. I'm pretty certain it's one of one of my old friends might be able to to help get us across the pond. If not, um, if not, keep your names down low. I know that's come in handy for for my missing partner. Miss so, Davis. <laughs> do you guys have apple trees in this uh, across the pond? Do you keep bringing up? Oh, yes, yes. Um, Why the fuck would I go there? Because you can plant more. She has and a point you... there. She really and has a point. I am, in fact, a male monkey. Um, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, I can't tell the John. I, like, I don't want to assume. I I don't, looking at you, I don't. I can't tell if you're male or female, and I didn't want to assume. Actually, I, I are you wearing assume. pants? I didn't. Is, I, that's important. Are you wearing pants? Yeah, I yes, it is a three-piece suit. I am I am wearing pants. How many women wear three-piece suits, my good sirs? Obviously, I don't know. this is a male gorilla. Is he wearing? Is he wearing? Is he wearing shoes? Or is no, he going? They don't, like, he does. Bare, I feel like foot. he does have shoes on, but his like weird monkey side toe is sticking out. <laughs> yeah. I want you to imagine there are no piece. shoes. It's the equivalent of like, uh, like fancy Crocs. <laughs> He's got fancy Crocs. We're not doing the weird toe thing. We're just <laughs> doing no shoes. 
Tar down. Tarzan's a little confused. He's just like me. Me wear one one piece suit, and he just looks at his loincloth, and he looks at yeah, Doctor Doolittle. Yeah, he looks normal. <laughs> one piece suit. We'll get you fitted for a suit, good sir. As Grendel. As... As you stand there listening to this conversation, you feel an opportunity arise. These people are in trouble. They need to get out. And you know these people want to get out to a particular place. Good old Jolly ah. England. Yes. Grendel is over here half listening. He's eyed up this duck, and he's loomed over it in a crouch as it stares at him. And Grendel reaches over Wait, into which this duck? pile of snow that this car has. What? Da Dab this Dab duck. is like looking at Grendel and is like, "Why is he looking at me? Why is he?" Why is he looking at me? smiles. Smiles a smile. Full oh of very sharpened teeth. He reaches over and out of the snow, he pulls out some corn that one of these carts must have dropped and feeds it to the duck. Oh. Uh, Doolittle gets thanks. noticeably relaxed. He had tensed up. The duck, the duck very cautiously eats, but like keeps its eye on you, Grendel. You, you've encountered see. this before. Is that uh, My the friend. animals? Sorry. No, go ahead, DM. I was going to say, uh, Grendel is very aware that animals tend to be instinctually very cautious around. Him. Almost like they can tell his ill intent. I can see. I can see it in your soul, my friend. You are a dark one. What what is the <laughs> the the duck do in response? Do you know? uh, to you it goes wah, 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 wah. <laughs> And to do little yes. it turns to him and is like this guy sounds evil as fuck. Do little. Is I he trying to seduce me to the dark side? I re I respond in duck. Uh, don't don't worry. I'll protect you. And then I turn to Grendel and I say, "Do not seduce the ducks, please." Oh, believe me. Also, are you familiar with not... the way that ducks uh, reproduce? What's that supposed to mean? I'm just saying you, hold on, you, hold on. You what the fuck is that supposed they, uh, to mean? You have a corkscrew true. penis, is what I'm saying. Yeah, what's so fucking weird about that? I was just making sure that Grendel knew about your foot. that. Nips again, dab dab. The Grendel walks away from the man <laughs> talking to the duck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wow. <laughs> and he walks into the middle over here, and he steps on uh the pulp that was this poor guy yeah he just steps in it yeah please excuse me fine gentlemen and ape does it seem that you must uh, vacate this frigid landscape? Does it seem that you may need to locate this one Dr. Frankenstein? Seems that way. I will say, I believe I have a score to settle, if it still does exist. Perhaps we may 
travel together. Together to the land of England. Two of course develop this mystery of ours yeah sounds good to me <laughs> always good to have a little device. extra help of course and i will avail myself of your services uh, to your service just as long as is necessary. But first, I must find some clothes. Yeah. And he, he's, he's going to look around. Roll, and hold on, roll 2d6. He's going to walk over to Grizzly McBride. Okay. Does, does he have a coat or anything? You actually, hold on, you go over to Grizzly, and you see he does have a coat, he does have pants, some overalls, a big hat, a beard, uh, but more importantly, when he was horribly maimed by that sawing machine, he had his arm cut off. The very same arm you're missing. So the coat is missing that arm. Uh, I almost said Dragool. Um, uh -huh. Grendel will take the coat and night, man. Uh -huh. He'll take the coat. I imagine it's a big, long coat. Yeah. Because we're out in the frontier. It's probably not long on Grendel. Mm -hmm. But I'll put the... the the coat on, and he'll put the hat on. I believe Grendel with... can shift sizes a little, so it's perfect size. He could squeeze into places. I suppose he could squeeze into the little coat, but <laughs> he would look a little silly. But he probably already looks a little silly wearing this regular man's coat. Jeb, he turns to uh, Dorian Gray. Hey, Dorian. Hello. Yes, Jeb. How may I help you? Oh, not much. Just, uh, I mean, you can, you guys going to be able to get out here off mine and dandy? Oh, well, I certainly am a dandy. And yeah, I'm certain we'll be fine. All right. Uh, you you can take my wagon, although it is missing a wheel. But you, there's some wheels laying around, plenty of yeah. wood. Paul knows how to whittle. Yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure, Paul will fit the wagon, or at least be able to fix it. Man. So, well, I guess he kind of puts his hands in his pockets. He kicks a stone. <laughs> guess guess this is a goodbye. Well, goodbye, good friend. All right, well. Don't, don't forget know. to write. I won't, because I don't know how to write. <laughs> oh, wait, you hear that? And in the distance, you hear uh, somebody with like a like a megaphone, but like one of those coned ones, you know, like uh, movie producers have. And they're going, woo, 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 woo. It's, it's the feds. I'll, I'll hold them off. That way you guys can get to the dock. I'll miss you. And he gives you a hug, Dorian. Oh, I remember all the times. <laughs> I remember all the good times we had. Yes, like when I saved you. Yes. Goodbye. I'm going to go stop him. I'll come up with some bullshit story. Thank you. And no problem. As you guys head towards the docks, Sneaking onto a 
a vessel, a cargo ship, heading to jolly old England. And that is the end of tonight's session. Right. Uh, it'll be it'll be good to be home for a bit. Oh yes, yes. Pip pip, cheerio. Ow. <laughs> Hell yeah, that rocked. That was fun. <laughs> I think that we will make a good team. <laughs>